Good morning, live from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante here covering Snowflake Summit 22. Dave, it's great to be here in person. The keynote we just came from was standing room only. In fact, there was overflow. People are excited to be back and to hear from the company in person the first time since the IPO. Lots of stuff, lots of deep technical dives. Uh, you know, they took the high end of the pyramid and then dove down deep in the keynotes. It was good. They did, and we've got Doug Henshin with us to break this down in the next eight to 10 minutes. VP and Principal Analyst at Constellation Research. Doug, welcome to theCUBE. Great to be here. All right, so guys, I was telling Dave as we were walking back from the keynote, this was probably the most technical keynote I've seen in a very long time, obviously in person. Let's break down some of the key announcements. What were some of the things, Dave, that stood out to you and what they announced just in the last hour and a half alone? Well, I, you know, we had to leave before they did it, but the Unistore piece was really interesting to me because, you know, the big criticism is, okay, Snowflake, that doesn't do transaction data, it's just a data warehouse, and now they're sort of reaching out. We're seeing the evolution of the ecosystem. Uh, Slootman said it was by design. That was one of the questions I had for them. Is this just kind of happen or is it by design? So that's one of many things that, that we can unpack. I mean, the security workload, uh, the, the Apache tables, we were just talking about that, Doug, which not a lot of hands went up when they said who uses Apache tables. But, but a lot of the things they're doing seem to me anyway to be trying to counteract the narrative that, Snow, I mean, that Databricks has put out there about you guys aren't open, you're a walled garden. And now they're saying, hey, we're, we're as open as anybody. But, what are your thoughts, Doug? Well, that's the, the iceberg announcement. Uh, also, uh, the announcement of, of Unistore being able to reach out to, to any source. Uh, you know, I think the big theme here was this, this contrast you constantly see with Snowflake between their effort to democratize and simplify and disrupt the market by bringing in a great big tent. And you saw that great big tent here today, 7,000 people. 2,000, 7,000 plus I'm told, 2,000 just three years ago. So this company is growing hugely quickly. Unprecedented. And yeah, yeah. Uh, fastest company to a billion in revenue, as Frank Slootman said in his keynote today. Um, you know, and I think that there's, there's that great big tent and then there's the innovations they're delivering. And a lot of their announcements are way ahead of the general availability. A lot of things they talked about today, Python support and some other aspects, they're just getting into public preview and many of the things that they're announcing today are in private preview. So it could be six, 12 months be before they're generally available. So they're here educating a lot of these customers. What is Iceberg? You know, they're letting them know about, hey, we're not just a data warehouse. We're not just letting you migrate your old workloads into the cloud. We're helping you innovate with things like the data marketplace. I see the data marketplace is really crucial to a lot of the announcements they're making today, particularly the native apps. You know, it was interesting. Slootman, in his keynote, said, we don't use the term data mesh, because that means has meaning to other people. And then the lady from Geico stood up and said, we're building a data mesh. And when you think about, you know, the, the Jamak Dagani's definition of data mesh, the, Snowflake's actually ticking a lot of boxes. I mean, it's, it's, is it a decentralized architecture? You could ar argue that it's sort of a, their own wall garden, but things like data as product, we heard about building data products, uh, uh, self-serve infrastructure, uh, computational governance, automated governance, those are all principles of Jamak's data mesh, so I, I, they're as close as anybody that, that I've seen, with the exception of it's all in the data cloud. Why do you think he was very particular in saying we're not going to call it a data mesh? I, I think he's respecting the principles that have been put forth by the data mesh community generally, and specifically Jamak Dagani, uh, and they don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to data mesh wash. I mean, I, I, I think that's a good call. Yeah, right? that's a, it's a little bit out there, and and it, they didn't talk about data mesh so much as Geico, uh, the keynoter, mentioned they're building one. So again, they have this mix of the great big tent of customers, and then very forward-looking, very sophisticated customers, and that's who they're speaking to with some of these announcements, like the native apps and the Unistore to bring transactional data, bring more data in and innovate, create new apps, and the key to the apps is that they're made available through the marketplace. Things like data sharing, that's pretty simple. A lot of, uh, of their competitors are talking about, hey, we can data share, but they don't have the things that make it easy, like the way to distribute the data, the way to monetize the data. So now they're looking forward to monetizing apps. They changed the name from the data marketplace to the, to the Snowflake marketplace. So it'll be apps, it will be data, it'll be all sorts of innovative products. You, you, when we talk about Geico, 
uh, JPMC is speaking at this conference uh, and the lead technical person of their data mesh initiative. So it's like they're, some of their customers that they're putting forth. So it's kind of interesting. And then Doug, something else that you and I have talked about on the, some of the panels that we've done is you've got an application development stack, you've got the database over there, and then you have the data analytics stack. And we've I, said, will those things come together? And then people have said, yeah, they have to. And this is what Snowflake seems to be driving towards. Well, with Unistore, they're reaching out and trying to bring transactional data in. Right. Hey, don't limit this to analytical information. And there's other ways to do that, like CDC and streaming, but they're very closely tying that again to that marketplace with the idea of bring your data over here and you can monetize it. Don't just leave it in that transactional database. So a, another reach to a broader play across a big community that they're building. And different than what we saw last week at Mongo, different than what you know, Oracle does with, with Heatwave, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. That was going to be my next question to both of you, is talk to me about all of the announcements that we saw, and, and like we said, we didn't actually get to see the entire keynote, had to come back here. Where are they from a differentiation perspective in terms of the competitive market? You mentioned, Doug, a lot of the announcements in either private preview or soon to be public preview early Talk to me about your thoughts where they are from a competitive standpoint. Again, it's that dichotomy between their very forward-looking announcements, they're just coming on with things like Python support that's just becoming generally available. They're just introducing uh, uh, machine learning algorithms like time series built into the database. So in some ways they're catching up while painting this vision of future capabilities and talking about things that are in development or in private preview, that won't be here for a year or two, but they're, so they're out there uh, talking about a ble bleeding edge story, yet the realities of the product sometimes are lagging behind. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there, a lot of companies choose not to an announce anything until it's ready to ship. Yeah. Typically, that's a technique used by the big whales to try to freeze the market, but I think it's different here, and the strategy is to educate customers on what's possible, because Snowflake really does have, you know, they're trying to differentiate from, hey, we're not just a data warehouse, we have a highly differentiable strategy from whether it's Oracle or certainly you know, Mongo is more transactional, but, but you know, whether it's Couchbase or Redis or all the other databases out there, they're saying we're not a database, we're a data cloud, right? right? Okay, what is that? Well, look at all the things that you can do with the data cloud, but to me the most interesting is you can actually build data products and you can monetize that and they're, the emphasis on ecosystem, you look at Slootman's previous company with ServiceNow, it took a long time for them to build an ecosystem. There was a lot of SIs and smaller SIs and it you know, finally kind of took off, but this is exceeding my expectations and ecosystem is critical because they can't do it all. You know, they're going to, otherwise they're going to spread themselves too that, thin. That's what I think some competitors just don't get about Snowflake. They don't get that it's all about the community, about their network that they're building and the relationships between these customers and that they're facilitating that with distribution, with monetization, things that are hard. So you can't just add sharing or you can share data from one of their uh, legacy competitors uh, in, in somebody else's marketplace, that doesn't facilitate the transaction, that doesn't you know, build on the community. Well, and you know, one of the criticisms, two of the criticisms on Snowflake is they don't, you know, they can't do complex joins, they don't do workload management. And I think their answer to that is, well, we're going to look to the ecosystem to do that, or you, you saw some kind of um, cost governance today in the, in the keynote. We're going to help you optimize your spend um, a little different than workload management, but related. Part of their governance was having a, a, a node uh, f for every workload. So workload isolation in that way, but that led to the cost problems, you know, like too many nodes with not enough optimization. So here too you saw a lot of uh, announcements around cost controls, budgets, new features, uh, user groups, that you could bring uh, caps and guardrails around those costs. In the last couple of minutes, guys, talk about their momentum. Frank Slootman showed a slide today that showed over 5,900 customers. I was looking at some stats uh, in the last couple of days that showed that there is an over 1,200% increase in the number of customers with a million plus ARR. Talk about their momentum, what you expect to see here. A lot of people here, people are ready to hear what they're doing in person. Well, I think this, the stats say it all. Uh, fastest company to a, to a billion in revenue, uh, you see the land and expand experience that many companies have, and in the cost control uh, announcements they were making, they showed the typical curve, like, and he talked about it being a roller coaster, and we want to help you level that out. Uh, so that's uh, a matter of maturation. 
Uh, that's one of the downsides of this rapid growth. You know, you have customers adding new users, adding new clusters, multi-clusters, and the costs get out of control. They want to help customers even that out uh, with reporting, with these budget and cost control measures. So uh, one of the growing pains that comes with uh, adding so many customers so quickly and those customers adding so many users and new uh, workloads quickly. I know we got a break, but the last point I'll make about the key uh, keynote is uh, Slootman alluded to the fact that they're not taking the foot off the gas. They don't see any reason to, despite the narrative in the press. They have inherent profitability. If they wanted to be more profitable, they could be, but they're going for growth. No. Going for growth. There is so much to unpack in the next three days. You won't want to miss it. The Cube's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Lisa Martin for Dave Vellante. Doug Henschen joined us in our keynote analysis. Thanks so much for walking, watching. Stick around. Our first guest is up in just a few minutes.